Good morning. Good morning. So nice to come into church and hear the chatter and the, everybody catching up uh, after the summer. I'd like to welcome you to Middletown Presbyterian Church on this beautiful rally day. Uh, we are glad to have any of you back who've been uh, away for the summer. Uh, and those of you who've been here all summer, it's good to see you again too. <clears throat> Uh, this morning, uh, we will have Punch on the Lawn actually downstairs in Fellowship Hall. Uh, one of the reasons for that, even though it is a beautiful day, usually on Rally Day we have the big screen up and we show a slideshow of the summer activities, uh, but if you have been here for that, in this sanctuary with that screen and the light, you usually can't really see the slides. So we're going to do the slides downstairs during uh, punch on the lawn, so uh, make sure you come down and see some of the activities uh, that have happened uh, during the summer. Also, next Sunday, uh, Sunday school starts at 9 o'clock for all ages. Uh, I will be starting a class next Sunday on uh, reading the Bible for all it's worth. Uh, reading the Bible is going to be a continuing emphasis uh, going forward, so uh, this is a, a good class to, to get you into reading the Bible if you're not already uh, into it, or if you were already reading it, it might give you some insight on how to get a little bit more out of it. So uh, join me at 9 o'clock next Sunday morning. Uh, I'm also teaching that, if you miss one, uh, out at Whitehorse on Tuesday morning, starting this Tuesday. Uh, and by, uh, adult Bible study will start not this week, but next week. But the youth Bible study starts this week. Uh, this Wednesday, youth Bible study. Saturday, youth group starts. So all the youth activities are beginning uh, during this week. Uh, <clears throat> and then next week, Adventure Club and adult Bible study uh, resume. We also have Colonial Day coming up. And Linda Fox is right here and with a little uh, blurb. In everybody's town talk in the Delaware County Times and a number of the newspapers this week, a wonderful, shiny printout. September is History Month in Delaware County. On the back are all of the events listed in the area that pertain to history, and there we are right in the middle of it. There's a lot going on if you're a history buff. Check out some of these events. We're thrilled to be in print. Didn't cost us a penny, which is even nicer. <laughs> Quilt. The number for today is two. In two weeks, Colonial Day will happen. If you were here last year, you know what that's about. This year is twice as good. It, we will take you back 200 years. It will be bigger, better, more expansive. We have things coming you will not to be. Make sure you're here. In addition to that, number two years in a row, on the back wall, don't get a whiplash, our second quilt for raffle. Our quilters have been working very hard all year. The quilt is back there. We have the handwork of Agnes Spear, Sally Burkham, Beth Shoemaker, Janet Weldon, Edna Maelstrom, and Doris Hawk. Stitches and stitches and stitches. I have the tickets. You know how it works. Five dollars a ticket or five tickets for 20. Take a look at that on your way out piece of history. So thank you. Get yourselves ready, get yourselves geared up, and we'll see you here in two weeks. Although you can come next week. <laughs> <laughs> and bring yeah. a friend or two or three or four of us. That's right. Come next week for regular worship and come in two weeks for colonial worship and colonial day and bring friends and neighbors and people you just grab off the street. We don't care. <clears throat> also, I'd like to invite Rusty to come up and Tell us about the Northeast Men's Retreat. I was going to use the microphones, but since Linda did this, I know I can't go up there. <laughs> All right, uh, third week, three, uh, September 27th, 28th, and 29th, the men of Middletown Church are going to be going up to a retreat up at Port Jervis at Lake Champion. John King started this a number of years ago. It's a tremendous opportunity for uh, men of all ages to go and get away from life and share fellowship, and singing, worship, prayer, uh, and scripture. Uh, it's a tremendous opportunity, but the issue is, the problem is, you have a routine. It's already set, but you need to break that, you know, one time, all right, and come up and get away with us on this weekend. It's tremendously refreshing. Uh, the Abrams team band will be pulling out Friday night, uh, and any other cars want to go up there. It's, it's, a, it's a long trip, but the fellowship on the ride up is often uh, fun as well. Uh, so I'd like you to take the opportunity to see Ray Fox and Treffler and myself. It's brochures back there. It's a great opportunity to take advantage of it. Thank you.
Thank you, Rusty. <clears throat> also, next week, immediately following worship, we're going to have a brief congregational meeting uh, to give you our, we met about four or five weeks ago uh, and laid out some plans for sprucing up the sanctuary. We're going to give you uh, more finalized plans on that next Sunday after worship. Uh, so remember to hang around for a few minutes after worship. <clears throat> I think that is all of our announcements for this morning. So I invite you all to stand with me as we sing our gathering song, Come, Now is the Time to Worship. The words are on the insert in your bulletin. to worship. People of God, worship the living God today. Remember that out of nothing God created the heavens and the earth. Remember that God raised Jesus from the powerlessness of death to the power of his right hand. Remember that not even the gates of hell can stand against God's purposes. Behold your God who reigns now and forever.
may be seated. We have <clears throat> some of our youth leading us in worship today, so we're doing some things a little different than usual, including the prayer of confession, which will be responsive this morning. The Apostle Paul says that he is convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. With that assurance, let us approach God's throne of grace and mercy to confess our sins. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are a people formed by your word in Christ. But we have wandered away from your truth. Have mercy on us. We have broken your commandments. Have mercy on us. We have distorted your teachings to serve our own ends. Have mercy on us. We have failed to trust your promises. Have mercy on us. Ground us again, O Holy One, in the written wisdom of Scripture and in the living word which is Christ Jesus. Nourish us on the bread of his teachings until we can taste your goodness. Renew us at the fountain of his wisdom so that we may find joy in obedience and freedom in giving ourselves to you. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven.
I'd like to invite Chris Benson to come up and share with us uh, some of the things that happened with children's ministry this summer. on can you hear me can you hear me okay thank you <laughs> we had a rip-roaring time at SunWest Roundup Vacation Bible School this year we had 50 children uh, four children made a profession of faith they invited Jesus into their lives so that to me is the most exciting part but we had a great time um, everyone that was involved in Vacation Bible School this year with crafts decorating, teachers, snacks, whatever. Please stand up for a minute. Anyone that was involved? And all these youth back here too. Um, and Doug, <laughs> it was a great time and thank you so much for your involvement. It takes so many volunteers to do something like that. But right now we're gonna uh, do a song, our theme song, uh, Sun West Roundup. And um, guys ready? We're gonna ride with Jesus Christ Round with your friends, we're on a quest We're heading out in the wild, wild west Just like folks in olden days We're gonna follow God together Jesus Christ is the same Yesterday, today, and forever Saw me at the Sun West Roundup, stomp your feet and shout Yeehaw! Saddle up with the Sun West Roundup, we're gonna ride, we're gonna ride Bring your friends to the Sun West Roundup, grab your hat and shout Yeehaw! Get along to the Sun West Roundup, we're gonna ride, we're gonna ride, we're gonna ride With Jesus Christ gonna ride with Jesus Christ. Round up your friends, we're on a quest. We're heading out in the wild, wild west. Just like folks in olden days, we're gonna follow God together. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Saw me at the Sun West Roundup, stomp your feet and shout. Yeehaw! Saddle up for the Sun West Roundup. We're gonna ride, we're gonna ride. Bring your friends to the Sun West Roundup. Grab your hat and shout. Yeehaw! Get along to the Sun West Roundup. We're gonna ride, we're gonna ride, we're gonna ride. We're gonna ride, we're gonna ride. Thank you. <laughs> they were all supposed to bow. <laughs> they didn't have room up here. Um, we had a great time and you know Jesus is the same yesterday, today and tomorrow and there was so much that the children learn and us adults when we do VBS I think we learn more than the, the kids do and so next year I'm, I'm already asking for volunteers. So. But, you know, sometimes you think, well, I don't have any talent, I can't do this or that. Come and join us. Come and join us. We have so much fun. Thank you. That was fun. Um, please join me for the reading of the Old Testament um, scripture, Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14. And that's on page 142 of your Pew Bible. The 
Okay, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14. If you will only obey the Lord your God by diligently observing his commandments that I am commanding you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. All these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall you be in the fruit of your womb, the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your livestock, both increase in your cattle and issue of your flock. Blessed shall you be sure your, shall your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing upon you in your barns and in, and in all that you undertake. He will bless you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord shall establish you as his holy people, as he has sworn to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. The Lord will make you abound in prosperity, in the fruit of your womb, in the fruit of your livestock, in the fruit of your ground, in the land that the Lord swore to your ancestors to give you. The Lord will open for you rich storehouse, his rich storehouse, the heavens to you to, to give you the rain of your land in its season and to bless all your undertakings. You will lend, met, you will lend to many nations, but you will not borrow. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be only at the top and not at the bottom. If you obey the commandments of, your, of the Lord your God, which I am commanding you today by diligently observing them, and if you do not turn aside from any of the words that I am commanding you today, either to the right or to the left, following other gods to serve them. This is the word of the Lord. I'd like to invite, invite uh, Beth Shoemaker and any of the youth who are going to be speaking. Come on up now. Good morning. The youth are going to actually share with you what we have been doing over the summer, but I just wanted to say thank you to each and every one of you for your um, support for your prayers. Um, we have not had a youth director since the beginning of May and we are going strong and that's thanks to you and thanks to what um, the Lord Jesus Christ can do. I have to thank Jim Stewart. He went to Shack with me. Um, he kept me safe. He was gave up a week of his vacation and we thank him. We thank Danielle and we thank Lisa who are always working with our youth and for so many of the parents and for others of you that volunteer and help us out whenever we ask, I just a sincere thank you. I just want to share a few verses with you before the kids start to speak. And these are verses I just shared with the kids not too long ago. And they are from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit, then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him, and that your roots will grow down into God's love and keep them strong. You know, as we work with the youth, and I actually, I, you know, I encourage you that Christ would make his home in your heart, and that the youth and that you will dig your roots down deep into God's love and into his his resources and as we start a new school year that you know Bible studies are starting and Sunday school starting that you will get involved in either a Bible study here at church or a Sunday school class um, or or elsewhere but just just to grab into God's love for you and to put your roots deep down into him and that's what we are trying to do with our kids each week in Bible study and in Sunday school and youth group and they are just a great group of kids, and we just pray that you would, I would ask that you would continue to pray for them and us as we work with our kids. We are actually going to start this morning with Teresa. <laughs> she's not happy, but she's good. Yeah, I'm a little bit 
Well, this is a surprise. Um, <laughs> good morning, and uh, I will be talking about impact and a teeny bit of shack. But first, I want to start with a verse, uh, James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed are those who persevere under trial, because when they have stood the test, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. And um, that really stood out, because that was um, in one of the first um, readings we did at Shack, And um, it just, it's so true, and it, I don't know if you can see this, but my thing says not a fan, and it means um, I'm not a fan of Christ, I'm a follower, and I have to persevere under trial, and uh, if I do, I will receive uh, heaven and the ultimate goal. So that was just my verse, and now I'm going to talk about impact, and first I want to say thank you for um, the people who prayed and the people who donated their time and money and uh, Mr. Abrams for going and driving, and I forget everybody who went because that was a long time ago, but um, that was kind of bittersweet because it was my last um, official trip as a youth, and um, we became so much closer as a youth group uh, that trip, and um, it was really cool because I got to meet uh, Seventh Day Slumber. Uh, that was, I've been listening to for years, so. Um, it was just a all around great trip and um and then Shack was my first trip as a chaperone, so that was fun. And uh no one fell down a mountain and no one got hurt. So uh it was a pretty successful trip. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> So one of the things that we got to do this year was we had Wild Night, and at Wild Night we, there were a bunch of games, and we were having fun, and there was music by uh, Matt came back for that, and that was really cool to see him again, and just to see everyone interacting and having fun. Um, but then later in the night, Matt gave a talk on Ezekiel and the dry bones, and a passage from there that stuck out to me uh, was Ezekiel 37, 12 to 14. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. And that kind of spoke to me because this past year was kind of a rough year for me, and... Um, I wasn't necessarily as close to God as I wanted to be, um, but I really felt like through this youth group and through the things that I got to do with them and like not just seeing them on Sundays but seeing them in school and on Wednesday nights at Bible study, that really helped me get back to a good spiritual place and I feel like if God can take dead bones and make them into new life, he can do the same with our hearts and so that's really what I got from Wild Night. And it was really cool to see other people, not that we just don't see in our youth group, but people from the community come out to that. And it would be great if we could get even more people for that. So that was one of the things that we did. Hello. My name is Mark. Uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about Shaq. I'm going to start with a uh, scripture. We did a daily devotional every day, and we were focusing on James. So this is from James 4, 4, verse 11 to 12. Do not speak evil against one another, brothers and sisters. Whoever speaks evil against one another or judges another speaks evil against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver and judge who is able to save and to destroy. So who then are you to judge your neighbor? And this really stuck out to me because, especially like in school, uh, we fight over things that aren't ours and we always like judge others. So, you know, you all heard this, the, the, this was my daughter and all those ones. Um, so what I got from that is like, we really shouldn't judge others because we don't have the right or the power to, only God does. So that was one main thing that I had learned. Uh, Shaq. We did a bunch of fun things at Shaq. 
we went rock climbing and caving, which were two different caves and rock walls than we did last year, which was really fun because there was a really tall one that was like over 100 feet or something like that. I don't know. Something like it. felt like it. And it was really hard. I, I didn't finish it, and now it did most of them. Uh, the caving was fun. Uh, what else did we do? We went kayaking and canoeing. That was fun. We did one day of just canoeing along the river and one day of whitewater rafting, kayaking stuff. And that was fun. I got a little ducky, which is those inflatable kayaks. Those things are awesome. Uh, but overall, like, Shack was just a great spiritual experience. It really showed, God really showed, like, the majesty of his creation to me. So that's mainly what I got from Shack. And I want to thank everybody who made Shack possible for us. So thank you. Um, a verse that stuck out to me this uh, the week of Shaq was Nehemiah 810b, do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Um, Shaq, we um, did a bunch of things. We hiked up the mountain on the first day to the observation tower, which we did every year that we went. Um, caving, we went through two caves. We crawled through one of them and you had to do an army crawl which, for about like 20 feet. And the other one, we had to walk through deep water to get out. Um, we did kayaking on the second day and we ate lunch on the river. Whitewater rafting was a new experience. Our guide was cool and told lots of stories and experiences from other trips. Um, we had three different ropes that we climbed and we fell back down during rock climbing. I made up, up two of them, which was a good thing compared to last year. Um, Zoe, one of the counselor's dogs, came with us on all the activities but white water rafting. She was a mountain dog for sure. Good morning. Um, thank you all know who I am. But, um, I'm going to find the Bible verse that I have. It's uh, James 1, 16 through 18, question mark. But I'm going to talk about Shaq while I'm looking at the Bible trying to find the verse. Um, Shaq was a wonderful experience because your distance from, oh, I found it. Look at that. But um, it was a wonderful experience because we're all distanced from civilization, if you will. And it's all like, you're in the middle of nowhere, and it's wonderful. Because you're like, it feel, I, I don't know, it just feels as if I was much closer to God because, um, I don't know, it's just like Ridley Creek State Park times 10. It's awesome. But um, I found the verse, so I'm going to read it. Let's see. Um, where is it? Um, well, that's problematic. Oh, my goodness. OK, here it is. Sorry. OK, um, 13 through 16. No one, when tempted, should say, I'm being tempted by God, for God cannot uh, be tempted by evil, and he himself tempts no one. But one is tempted by one's own desire, being lured and enticed by it. Then, when that desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin, and that sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death. Do not be deceived, my beloved. And that stuck out to me, because a lot of people always are like, oh, the devil made me do it. Or, and I ask myself a lot of questions, you know, God, why are you putting all this on me? And... Um, you shouldn't be saying that because God doesn't give you anything you can't handle. It's more that um, he knows your limits and he wants to test us, and that's what our lives are about. You know, God tests us, and we have to push through with God and stay faithful. And like Teresa, I have the same bracelet. Who would have thunk it? But um, um, I am a follower of Christ. I'm not a fan because um, thick or thin, I stay with God to the best of my ability. It's very hard sometimes because everything's going good. You just kind of check out and say, see ya. And then you come back. And I've seen that happen with a lot of people, but it's a true challenge to stay with God all the time. So, and again, I thank you all for um, who made Shaq possible, the donations and your time. Thank you very much. Good morning. Let us pray together. Lord, we thank you for this morning. 
uh, we thank you for uh, this past summer, uh, for all of uh, the new and old experiences, uh, for all of our uh, time spent with you. And Lord, we ask that you would continue to challenge us and grow us and uh, send us out into your world uh, to be your representatives. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it's a little hard to believe that summer is over. I mean, it seems like it was just May, and now here we are in September, starting a new school year, starting a new season in the church, uh, and it's fall. And fall tends to be uh, the, the season that we think about harvest. And so we're going to start a, a series, a harvest series, uh, where we're going to be focusing on superfruits. Now, the term superfruit actually became popular in like 2005. Uh, really, I think it was all a marketing campaign. Um, but basically, superfruits are supposed to be those, those fruits that are particularly good for you, those that, that can make you healthy and keep you healthy. They're supposed to have high amounts of, of really good vitamins and nutrients, and these things called antioxidants, which apparently help to uh, handle free radicals, whatever those are. <laughs> but superfruits are these things that are supposed to be really good for your health, to keep you feeling good, to keep you healthy, to fight disease. And the Bible also talks about fruits, the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, and these are also super fruits. They're things that not only are good for you, for your mental, emotional, spiritual health, but also they can have positive effects on all those around you as well. But as we start this series, I think we need to think a little bit about, well, where do these fruits of the Spirit come from. So, turn with me, if you would, to the Gospel of Luke, and we are in chapter 8, starting at verse 4. When a great crowd gathered, and people from town after town came to Jesus, He said in a parable, a sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell on the path and was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered for lack of moisture. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. Some fell into good soil, and when it grew, it produced a hundredfold. And he said this, as he said this, he called out, let anyone who has ears listen. Then his disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but to others I speak in parables, so that looking they may not perceive, and listening they may not understand. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The ones on the path are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. The ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. But these have no root. They believe only for a while. And in a time of testing, they fall away. As for what fell among the thorns, these are the ones who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. But as for that in good soil, these are the ones who, when they hear the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patient endurance. The seed is the Word of God. And this morning we have heard about a number of programs that took place over the summer with Vacation Bible School and, and Shack and uh, Wild Night. And we have other programs all year that include Sunday School and, and Youth Group and Bible Study and an Adventure Club and Kids Club. 
an upward basketball. And all of these programs are ways that we are trying to sow the seed, to get the seed out there, to get the Word of God out into the world, into the community, that people might hear it and might believe and that, that fruit might be produced in their lives. But what about us? We, we need to be producing the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. We, we need to have the Word of God planted deep within us so that the fruit of the Spirit that we'll be talking about for the next several weeks might be produced in us. And I want you to think a little bit about the concept of, of fruit. Fruit is, was created by God to be attractive, to be desirable by consumers. And by consumers, I mean any living thing that eats. Fruit is, is sweet and luscious. It's enjoyable. And so it is consumed, and I don't want you to think too hard about this illustration, but then the seed which is low in the fruit gets spread, and more fruit is produced. And that's really what God does through us. He, he plants the Word deep within us, and if we nurture it, and if we study it, and if we make it a part of who we are, then God begins to produce the fruit of the Spirit in us. And as we look at the, the fruit of the Spirit, we'll see that, that these are the things that ought to distinguish us as Christians. They're things that, that when people look at us, they ought to see these fruits. They, they should distinguish us as different from the rest of the world. And these fruits should be attractive so that it, it draws people, that people see these, this fruit produced in our lives and think, wow, the, those people are they're, they're different. They don't behave like the rest of the world. They treat people differently. They really seem to care about others. And they begin to wonder, what is it? What is it that makes these people different than everybody else that I know? And a seed is planted. And a new person is drawn in. And hopefully as we, we love and nurture them, they begin to produce fruit. See, I think one of the things that we get confused about, at least I did for many years, was that I always thought that fruit meant converts. If I was producing fruit, that meant I was, I was converting other people to Christianity. Well, as I've read the Bible, that's not really what the Bible says. It says that fruit should be produced in our lives, but the fruit of the Spirit is not converts. It's, it's characteristics of the Christian that should be different from everybody else. Because when Jesus talks about converting people, He talks about the harvest. And that's not something we do. He says the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Pray for more workers to be sent out, sent out into the harvest. He's already preparing the harvest. He's sending people who are, are producing fruit in their own lives out to reap the harvest, to bring it in. It's, it's two different concepts. And so for most of this, we're going to be focusing on each of the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, looking at what each of them is, how each of them should be reflected in our lives as we try to live as Christians. And then at the very end, we'll look at the harvest and the Lord of the harvest. 
But these fruits are things that God develops in us as we invest ourselves in His Word, as we study His Word, as we, as we learn His Word, as we make it a part of who we are as individuals and as a church. And so, as part of this, I'm going to be nagging you. If you're not already reading your Bible on a daily basis, you need to start. You need to get into God's Word. You need to start reading it, and you need to find opportunities to talk about it with others. And you can do this by coming to Wednesday Bible study, either 9.30 in the morning or 7 o'clock at night. There's a number of you that are involved with community Bible study. That's fine. There's small groups you can get involved with or start one of your own to gather some people to read some Scripture and talk about it together on a regular basis. But you need to start reading the Bible if you aren't already, getting into it, learning it, beginning to understand it and apply it to your lives, that we all might begin producing this fruit in ourselves and living a different kind of life out in the world, living in ways that are different than others. And we'll see as we move through what that might look like. But don't wait. Start now. Start wherever you feel comfortable. Start in Genesis and read all the way through. Get a Get a Bible that, uh, and I think Joanne uh, Gallagher has one, it's chronological. It takes the whole Bible but puts it all in chronological order so that you can read it uh, as it happened. I don't really care how you do it. Just do it. You can get a one-year Bible that gives you readings every day so that you can read through the whole Bible in a year. Just pick up a Bible. And if you don't have a Bible, if you can't afford a Bible, talk to me. I'll get you a Bible. But start reading. Start exploring God's Word because it really is a love letter to you. It's the story of God's love for you. And who doesn't want to read about that? So let us dive into God's Word and begin producing fruit in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. That's the Lord of my soul, oh, my soul. It's time to
Chris Benson to come back up. Uh, we're going to do a dedication of teachers and students. Uh, you should have an order in your bulletin. There's an insert. Thank you, youth. That was great. Um, right now, I'd like to invite our Sunday school teachers, our enrichment teachers, our nursery school teachers, our adventure club teachers, our kids clubs teachers, all those that are involved um, with teaching our children and our youth to stand up. <laughs> I, have, I have three questions for you. Um, and the first one is, will you be a faithful teacher of children and youth and adults, teaching them God's word, its application to their lives and helping them to grow in understanding and wisdom. As a teacher, will you seek to be prepared for class to develop meaningful relationships with your students, to pray for your students, and model for them what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? Will you use your imagination, creativity, and personal experiences to enhance class time with your students? Okay, you guys may sit down. And we have a question for our Sunday school students and our youth. Um, you might as well stand up too. <laughs> yeah, come on, come on, come on. We have some back here. Um, and I know some actually went to enrichment. But some of them are standing in the back. Some of them are standing in the back. Um, you know, my husband when um, he invited Jesus into his life. He was about 24, and he remembered all his teachers from Sunday school. They just came flooding back, and so they taught God's word to him, and it planted in his heart. Um, so when I see these youth up here, I see what a difference our teachers are making in the lives of our children and our youth. Um, so a question for our Sunday school students, and this is very important. Um, will you be faithful to attending class, learning from others, sharing your story, your questions, and your understanding as part of a class. Good, thank you. Now, if you are able to lay hands, you know what, all those teachers stand back up. Um, if you're able to lay your hands upon one of those, your teachers, reach out and do this as we, we're gonna pray this prayer for our teachers. Oh, thank you, I forgot I was a teacher. Um, there's an insert. And follow along with this prayer. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, you call us to serve in your kingdom, and we pray for these, your students, servants, who have willingly accepted your call to teach our children, youth, and adults. We thank you for their caring hearts, creative spirits, and gentle ways in guiding the students in learning your ways and your words. We pray for this year that it might be transformative year in the life of this church as students grow wisdom and understanding. Nurture relationships and friendships, Lord. For we pray in Christ's name, amen. Thank you, you may sit down. Now, I would like those who who are teachers in our schools, our colleges, our universities, or if you work in colleges or schools or universities, um, to stand up. Yes, yeah, stand up. I see some back there. Mm -hmm. um, this day, we acknowledge not only those who serve as church as teachers, but also that know that each of you serve in our community in significant ways 
by working with our children and youth as teachers, administrators, support staff, faculty, and etc. You know, God gives us callings to serve in the kingdom, and we thank you for the willingness to hear God's call to be part of the teaching institutions of our community and to serve in this way. Now, if you're able to lay hands on one of these people who serve in our schools, please do as we pray for them. Um, pray, let's pray for, for them. Lord, as a new year begins, we pray for those who are teachers, administrators, faculty, and support staff in our schools, colleges, and universities. Give them your guidance in how they are to be in relationships with their students and with their colleagues. We pray that in this year, learning and understanding might be imparted but also that friendships and relationships might be strengthened. Keep each of these and all of those who teach safe in our schools. Surround each school with your spirit that what is learned might be according to your will and guidance. Help our children and you to grow and mature that they might be prepared to move out into your world serving and caring and sharing of who they are. Lord, we offer to you each of these servants. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you so much. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day, for this start of a new season in the life of our church. Lord, we do give you thanks for all of those who uh, teach our children, both here in Sunday school and, and various activities at the church, as well as in uh, our schools and colleges and universities. Uh, and Lord, we do ask your blessing upon them. Uh, we also lift up uh, Chris as she uh, manages our, all of our education activities here at the church and ask your blessing upon her. And Lord, as we gather, we also lift up some of those in, in need of um, your tender care. And Lord, this morning we lift up uh, Debbie Hall, who is uh, undergoing dialysis, and just uh, pray, Lord, that you would be with her, that you would strengthen her body, and Lord, we just pray that you would give her healing, that you would uh, restore her kidneys to full uh, activity, and that you would um, just bring her uh, to health and wholeness. And Lord, we lift up um, both Dorothy and uh, Cindy Boyer. Uh, Dorothy is having a foot issue, and Cindy is uh, undergoing more chemo, and we just lift both of them to you, and we pray that you would fill each with your spirit. Uh, that you would strengthen their bodies for uh, the, whatever treatments uh, are necessary for each of them. Uh, and Lord, that you would just uh, give them healing and wholeness uh, and help them to know uh, that you are at work in them and around them. And we ask your blessing upon them. We lift up Jerry Wilson's mother, uh, who seems to be having um, internal bleeding, but uh, they haven't been able to find the cause, and so we just... Uh, Lift her to you and pray that, uh, that you would heal her, uh, uh, either just uh, immediately and miraculously, uh, or uh, at very least, help the doctors to, to find uh, where this bleeding is coming from and, and uh, be able to stop it and uh, get her back to health. Uh, but we ask your blessing upon her. Uh, and Lord, we lift up um, Ken Clark, uh, who's had a series of strokes this week, and just uh, pray that you would be with him that you would give him uh, strength and healing, fill him with your spirit. Uh, Lord, we also just pray that you would be uh, present among uh, his family as they gather around him and, and try to encourage and support him, uh, that they might feel you at work among them. And Lord, certainly there are many others on our hearts and our minds. Um, we lift up uh, the two Danes, the uh, three-year-old and, and the infant, uh, who are both struggling with some health issues and just Pray that you would be with them and with their parents and family, uh, that you would bring them all uh, healing. And Lord, there are others that we may not have mentioned publicly that we also lift to you, trusting that you will be involved in each family and each life and each situation. 
Uh, and Lord, we ask that as your people, uh, if you see fit, that you would fill us with your spirit and send us that we might be your presence uh, and your healing touch uh, to those to whom you send us. And Lord, we pray all of these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The ushers will now come forward. We will continue our worship with the giving of our tithes and offerings. Uh, <clears throat> this morning we also have a uh, deacon's collection, so there will be a second uh, wave of, of plates coming your way. That is uh, for the benevolent work of our board of deacons. We're not doing the doxology, so if you just come forward, ushers. Let us pray. Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings this morning for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Amen.
Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. The words are on the insert in your book. Please join hands for the benediction. Friends, God's love is amazing. Go out in His amazing grace to serve Him wherever you go, knowing that He goes with you and will strengthen you for whatever He calls you to do. So go in God's name to serve Him. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.